Like moths to a flame, you've thrown caution to the wind for a glimpse into our world. Well, now you're in it. Welcome to Aft Up Stories. Everybody and welcome to a new episode of Effed Up Stories. I am your host, Will Pender. And I am your co-host, Ryan Sharp. And tonight we have a guest with us. His name is Ward Weinheimer. And he has some very interesting videos that seem to ha- have captured actual aliens on film. And uh, he also has, of course, very strange stories to add to that. Um but before we uh, get into uh, Ward's uh, story there, I just uh, want to run through a couple things. Uh, if you have your own f up story on the paranormal or UFOs, uh, we'd love to get it from you. Get it onto the website and into a podcast. And you can do that by visiting the official website, which is fduppstories.com. That's E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. Go to the menu, hit the submit link, fill out the form, and hit submit and we'll get that done. And also, for anyone who has any personal experiences or information that's otherwise hard to come by regarding reptilians, I'm very interested to hear from you as well. We're uh, doing a little bit of research on behalf of one of our donors, known only as the eccentric listener. So if you could get that to me, um, and we can get that to him, and also we're going to be doing a uh, a podcast on the topic so if you could do that that would be greatly appreciated and with that having been said welcome ward to the show thank you thank you very much glad to be here very happy to have you so l- let's just start from the beginning um so my initial introduction was uh you sent me uh, a link to your youtube channel that has mm-hmm. um that has well i mean uh, from the videos that i've seen I mean, yeah, they are, uh, you know, like t- like typically, there is kind of hard to see uh, what it is, but I could definitely tell that there was something, um, right, with with almost like a, a human shape, but at the same time irregular, that uh, appeared to be on the foot of your bed. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, un- unfortunately, um, you know, I I had no memory of, of filming this and. Uh, unfortunately, the television was the only light on, and it was a 2009 uh, shitty cell phone camera. <laughs> so all those three things combined, you know, made it not so you know great. But you know, I, I thought about it for a while. You know, I um, and I wasn't even going to release any of my videos because, uh, well, because you know they're they're not perfect. But then I was thinking, well. Just because it's not perfect, does that mean that nobody wants to see it? No, of course not. You know, it's really, you know, that, right now, this, this is the, the, the best that we have out there, I think. I mean, I, every other um, alien video I see <clears throat> seems to be fake. You know, I don't see too many really uh, real ones. And if, if it does seem real, it always seems to be done by an anonymous person. So you can't find out, um, you know, anything about it. So that answers uh, one part of my question w- was like, what made you decide to record it? So you don't recall actually doing it. It, it was just well, some... that one, the alien robot video. 
and there's others. It's like some of the videos I do remember recording, some of them I don't. Um, the alien robot one was the one that uh, introduced, let me know that uh, something really was strange going on. I thought I was going crazy. I thought I lost my mind. And um, so I was, I was making recordings of myself of things that I thought were strange, but I didn't catch really much. And then one day I was looking at my cell phone and I saw um, a thumbnail that I didn't recognize. And that's when I watched the video and I, <laughs> I saw, hey, I don't remember this. And who's this in my room, you know? So, uh, it totally freaked me out. So uh, actually, one thing I want to uh, get out there before we even move along, for anybody who wants to see it, uh, Ward, what's the name of your channel so people can go and yeah. look up these videos? Yeah. Ward and then Alien Video, two words, just Ward and then Alien Video. Perfect. At, uh, yeah, on the YouTube channel. So, Ward, what uh, uh, prompted you to begin filming, uh, you know, strange things to begin with? Right. Uh, I was uh, having, uh, w well, I should go back a little. Um, there was a lot of, uh, like, my life was... And uh, not going so well. There was a uh, def couple deaths in my family. I broke my back, lost my job. And I'm also an insomniac on top of that. So, I mean, things just weren't going well. But, um, and I wasn't sleeping much. And But, like, these strange things started happening. I, I thought, you know, I heard my mother and daughter say things. And then when I asked them about it, they said they didn't say them. And then I was, we were, and also... I had forgotten totally about this until somebody else put a comment on one of the videos about getting pictures. Yeah, I was getting pictures on my cell phone before I got the video of pictures I didn't remember, which I, at the beginning of it, I was uh, just putting up to maybe I hit the, the, um, the phone by accident and took a picture by accident. But the thing was is that the pictures always had you know, weird lights and weird things. Like on one of them, it looked almost, there was an actual, looked like an angel's wing on it. And I, 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 that's the only thing I could describe it as. It was totally white with feathers. And it was in, in my room, in my condo. And, um, but, you know, all that stuff, you know, really didn't, it didn't, didn't click for me. You know, I just was like, you know, this is just an, uh, an aberration of, of the photo and everything. And, um, and then just, you know, like I said, you know, just one day I just looked at my phone and I saw that odd one. And, um, you know, I, I knew that something else was happening too, because, you know, back in, I, I was born in 62, so I grew up in the seventies. So I, I have done a lot of hallucinogens and stuff. So I know what hallucinations look like and are supposed to feel like on those drugs. And this was not anything like that. It just seemed like I had entered a new, new different reality, you know? So, uh, so Ward, how old were you when this started to happen? Well, um, 2012 is when that was recorded. So 2012 was the year. Okay, so th how old would that make you at that point? That would have made me uh, 50. Okay, right. So, so uh, Ward, you seem awfully convinced that the um, beings in the images and in the videos um, are extraterrestrial. What, what makes yeah. you think that? Many, many reasons. Uh, for one, on the video, which I didn't even realize until just last year, that the way the video was shot, it's an impossible shot. There's a wall and a headboard. There's the headboard to the bed and the wall are supposed, you know, the angle, the angle that the video is shot at from the beginning, you could almost see four corners of the bed and that's physically impossible. So that means that that wall and that headboard had, were, are totally gone, disappeared. So for one thing right there, that takes some technology to make a wall on a headboard disappear. I mean, and also, um, I was, you know, I've had a lot of other old strange things happen to me, but, you know, I, 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 I run the gamut to thinking it was, might be the government playing games on me. 
um, you know, at first I thought it was ghost. I thought it was poltergeist, but we know. Um, but also like in that video, there's a strange thing on my bed. Um, I even have, they, they even put a face on my, my leg, <laughs> I, which is still, still there permanently. It's not, it's not a tattoo. It's made out of just the, the fat in my leg and some, uh, um, skin and you can see a face on my leg. It's totally freaky. Uh, so what, <clears throat> what do you think, uh, I mean, prior to when you, you actually had your first experience, when you, mm -hmm. you started getting things on your phone, um, did you have uh, a past where you had any paranormal? No, not really. I mean, most of my life, I, you know, I've always believed in UFOs all my life. You know, um, as a child, you know, I was, you know, when the teacher would tell us to read books in school and do a report. I'd always get these books on, um, you know, like Chariots of the Gods and, and books about UFOs. And, you know, I was always into it. And I'd always, and to me, because of the preponderance of the evidence, it just, I, I felt that UFOs and aliens were real. But I never imagined in my entire life that I'd ever had any kind of interaction. You know, of course, uh, I think all of us uh, experience things throughout our life, but there was nothing major. And, uh, you know, most of the time, even I, even still to this day, a lot of times something will happen and I'll just say, did I really see that? And I, I think that's one of the reasons that they let me record it because I don't really believe a lot of the things that I actually can see with my own eyes. It's like, did I really just see that? Yeah, your brain, you know, or not, it doesn't want to believe it. It's like, well, that couldn't have been, you know, and I think that's a, Maybe that most of us even experience more paranormal stuff than we realize, but we just brush it off, you know? Yeah. So your experience starts with um, these anomalous photographs appearing on your phone. And Correct. then it evolves to video. Correct. Um, so I, I'm guessing that the experiences that you, you begin to have started to escalate from there. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, once once I found that out, yeah, it, it seemed like, well, also the same, like, so after I found that one video, I found uh, three other videos. Was it three? Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm, it's, I'm getting a little confused. Right? I think two or three other videos that I did not recognize on my phone. I know, I think it was just two more. Um, and one showed, a sh which is on my channel, a shadow being materializing uh, right outside my daughter's room on her door. And the third video showed me uh, walking to my bedroom. And all of a sudden, as I get to the, my bedroom door, I'm um, underneath the sheets of my bed. I just got... There, there's no cut in between this. I'm at my bedroom door and all of a sudden I'm under, under, underneath the sheets of my bed and I'm still, and I'm filming underneath my bed, my sheets of my bed. And, uh, you know, that's physically impossible. I mean, for one thing, it was a cheap ass phone from 2009. They didn't have pause buttons. They didn't have anything like that. So, I mean, that, it, that was my, actually my best, I thought it was the best because I figured how can anybody disprove this? Because I had the SD card with it on there and everything. You know, you could see that this was really filmed. But uh, another strange thing is that a lot of my videos have been taken back. The alien robot video, the shadow uh, being video, and that other video I just talked about, all wiped off of my SD card with other videos instantaneously when I, as I was trying to upload them to YouTube. That's it. But luckily... <laughs> Luckily, I was able to make a recording of the shadow beam and the alien robot video. But the third one, I didn't get to do it yet. That's interesting. Um, so you mentioned that you have a, a daughter in the house. Is there any other family there with you? Well, I, I live with my daughter in my condo, which is in Fort Myers, Florida. And my mother lives in Estelle, which is a half hour away. So we, both, both my daughter and I, we uh, sometimes, you know, we'll stay at my mother's a half hour away, you know, a lot of times just to spend time with her. She's now 86. My daughter's 22. And, um, well, that's it. That's it. And I don't have any other, I don't have any pets or anything. So, uh, 
you know, it can't be any kind of pets or anything. So, uh, are you the only one who's experienced this phenomenon or has your, uh, your daughter or your mother experienced it? Well, my daughter has witnessed it, but it's not been directed around her. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, the, um, I, you know, when I, I've seen things, I've, I've called my daughter and she's, she's seen it. Uh, my mother just recently um, started having these visits from these people. She's never had anything paranormal, aliens or anything like that happen in her whole life. And just a few months ago, uh, she's had people, uh, when she woke up in the morning, staring at her while she's sleeping. That's creepy. Yeah, very creepy. I, I had thought it was, since she's 80, 86, I thought maybe these she was starting to see these people because maybe it was time for her to go. Do and you, maybe they were coming to take her away, you know? So was this but people... Thank God like, that wasn't it. Was this people oh, outside her window? Like, uh, No, no, I'm talking about at the edge of her bed. And then when she woke up and she, they saw that she saw them, they disappeared. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, well, that makes sense then, uh, what, what you mentioned before. Because it is something um, that a lot of people report when they're... They're nearing the end. They see, you know, relatives and exactly, and yeah. Stuff. And that was straight to my, you know, because she's, you know, she's in great shape, but still, you know, her, she's never experienced anything like that in her life. And I, I just lost my father and my sister, and I lost my wife back in '99. And you would think it'd be one of those three people that would be coming there, but it's not. It wasn't those. They stopped as soon as my, my mother said the last time. And I was here. She said, I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want, but I don't want you here. I didn't ask you to come here. You never come back. And they haven't. So that, that's uh, strange. So, um, now the, that's different from your experience. Um, yes, it is. So would you say that generally, um, you know, the, the experiences at least to do with what appears to be UFOs or a, well, aliens, really, um, is that more isolated in your home, or does it like has it? No, the, the alien video was recorded in her home. Okay, so you've had it in and, both both places, yes, both homes, both just as strong, just as equal on some equal amounts. Wherever I'm spending the time is where it seems to happen. So it seems um, almost as if to follow you. To an extent. Oh yeah, my that's what they feel. Both my daughter and mother think it's 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 about me. So, and also, I, they even left me a note one time, written in my own language, in my own handwriting, and it was to me about me and telling me that something in my life is going to happen in seven years, and about so that's about 2019. So it hasn't had anything to do with the world, and so this is something private. So I'm not going to share that, but. Um, you know, and of course, uh, I put the, the note back in my room, and then I went back like a couple of weeks later, and it's not there anymore. So that's strange. Yeah. So, so what do you think? Uh, you know, were you poking and prodding anywhere? Like, what do you think set this course of events into action? Not a clue. Not a clue. Well, I, the only thing that that changed was that I was under a lot of duress. You know, just stress. And, uh, and I wasn't sleeping and that's another thing. Um, it always seems to happen when I haven't slept as much. So to me, in my thought, this is the only theory. This is my theory that, uh, like all of us, we're so concerned about our everyday 3d world that we really don't, can't experience th anything else. And, I think that aliens and ghosts and everything, because I haven't slept so well, I, the veil is a little bit thinner, and um, and they're able to contact me then. I think that's why every time, every time that I've captured something on video, it's been because I haven't slept for a night or two. I do know there's something strange about when you like I, I've. Uh, you know, not that I have insomnia, but there are times I have trouble sleeping, and, and there has been periods in the past where um, I think the longest I stayed up was a uh, like two full days, like over forty eight hours. And um, 
there, there's something about it. I almost feel like I'm stoned, right? Like yeah, uh, by yeah. the end of it. But I wonder if, if uh, you know, is it just tricks of the brain sometimes in that sense? Exactly, or- exactly. Yeah, well, that, that's what I felt. I felt like that, you know? I, I felt like, but the thing is, like I said, I had done a lot of hallucinogens, and I had been in the past stayed up for that time, and I've never had these kinds of experiences before, you know? Well, I guess the most, uh, just, uh, the biggest thing in your case is that you have video, right? Yes, exactly. So, so you exactly. can't even say yes. it's just it's just in your head. Uh, you right? Have. Yeah, because yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, I had even thought, well, maybe these are all just projections of my mind on the video. You know, maybe I could actually somehow maybe my mind is able to project these things on the video, and this is all not real. But then they did things like leave me the note, put a face on my leg, you know. They've uh, let me see, you know, from a distance, I've seen UFOs. Well, you know, looking at what happened so far, what I will say is that uh, it it is, for whatever reason, when someone goes through a uh, stressful situation, in in other words, when they're vulnerable, right? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, the way you feel, like your your energy, obviously your energy is going to be in a more um, negative state when these things happen and your energy will actually draw certain things in uh, to you right it's, it's almost like if you have like something bad happen to you um and then you dwell on it and that's where the old expression comes from you know bad luck comes in threes because oftentimes the f- you know the first bad thing happens and then you're down and then another thing happens you're still down mm-hmm. um you know because positive energy attracts positive energy and negative negative but i also wonder if there's entities out there that can read the you know the energy signature the signal yeah yeah right that's very possible and, yeah and mm-hmm. if there's and if there's entities that see uh people such as yourself as vulnerable then perhaps that's the perfect uh you know target to go after because you know, uh, for one thing, they need somebody that's going to be perceptive to it. You know, somebody who who's not all caught right. up in the moment. The other thing is that, I guess, if you're in a really bad spot, anything that you would say to anybody about, like, things that you witnessed or whatever, they know that people would most likely assume it's because of your situation. You know, no, it's exactly. because you're so stressed. Sure. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, Ward, you did say that... Uh, this escalated you know you had this yes. you had so you had these videos you had these experiences but at some point things escalated and got really effed up what what happened right. after, after you had these videos well it's not so much i mean i, I could t- i'm so much happened in like from 2012 to 2014 it's i i, I even, i'm even forgetting some of this stuff and then all of a sudden somebody asked me a question and then i'll remind me oh yeah i forgot all about that i mean so much happened. It's just unbelievable. Um, well, you know, what also I wanted to add that I also during this, after I realized there's aliens though, I started getting like all this nasty, um, like all this nasty talk towards me and it in English and it, I could hear it perfectly in my room and stuff. Uh, directed at me, saying terrible things about me. I'm a terrible father, you know, all this kinds of stuff. And, um, and on top of that, I, I, you know, it seemed like we were be I was being followed by by vans. And like one day, I went into my um, my condo, and I walked by one of my air vents, and I noticed that somebody had been in my house, and they had unscrewed two of the air vents to where the screws were halfway out to like, it looks like, uh, I had, I had gotten home too early and they didn't get a chance to screw them all the way back in. Now to me, what, who would do that? I mean, a, a burglar wouldn't do that. Um, uh, an, an entity wouldn't do that. A ghost wouldn't do that. The only people I could think of who would do, try to go into your vents is the government. Well, that that was uh, my thought. Was well, I mean, first of all, I mean, you you don't have a history of mental illness, right? No, no. Right. So you know, and you're fifty too, right? So if, if you were gonna right. have if you were gonna have issues, and that's why I asked how old you were earlier, because that stuff you know usually presents right. itself at a younger age. Exactly. Um, exactly. So yeah. So being older, uh, you know, and like 
being able to you know throw that away that that's not the case um i just i it's interesting that you you know especially you you, okay you get these videos you don't know where they come from um i should ask did you notice uh people following you before or after you put those videos online after 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 okay yeah so you put these videos online and then you start getting these uh well no no i'm not sorry not online they weren't online yet no 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 this is um uh they weren't online at all no they just got online uh late 2015 so how do you think they i mean i i I know we're getting into conspiracy theory uh territory here but uh, (laughs) exactly you know as they say uh cell phones uh there's theories right that uh anything that you put on them i mean you're always connected to the internet and there's theories that there's government groups that can monitor and everything that goes through your phone goes there i mean do you think that or just activate your microphone remotely or just activate exactly exactly. so do you think that there's like possibly uh you know a, a group somewhere either government or military or even uh, uh, self-funded through like billionaire, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who, you know, they actually look for this stuff. They scan through these things, uh, trying to find exactly what you have. And if that's the well, case, I'm not sure. It, sh- sh- I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to say I, I, I don't think that's the point. I, I don't think that's it. I don't think they go through my phone and stuff. What I believe is that they probably noticed i don't maybe because they have radar or whatever in the military installations and maybe they saw that ufos were around my area or maybe they're in league with them or with some bad aliens that's what i believe i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you no that's okay actually that's a good point if if they if i were in a group like that and i and i had you know uh somebody had reported activity in a specific area if I were going to comb over an area for information, that's where I'd do it. Um, and if they do have access to the, uh, you know, the personal information on people's phones, say even through the ISP, like the phone company. Right. Uh, I'm sure like afterwards they probably did. I'm sure. And they probably still do right now because I've had nothing but problems with electronics ever since. So what do you think the, the goal was there? Uh, you know, you find this thing, I mean, for, for whatever reason, reasons unbeknownst to us, they don't want anybody to know about it. But uh, and truthfully, I mean, you could take, even if your video was like 100% clear, there was no doubt in the world of what it was, and you put it up there. I, I'm not really convinced that uh, the, the main, you know, the majority of people would actually care. But the government... Right, exactly. The government seems so... Um, or I don't even know if it's the government anymore. I, I think it's, it's bigger than that. Whoever it is that's it's, overseeing this, I don't even think, I don't understand why it's such a big deal to them. And yeah. like, unless it's true that they do have a contract uh, with our government, you know, between the aliens and the government. I mean, there was this right. whole theory that, uh, you know, they would be allowed to abduct so many people a year um, in right. exchange for technology. And then, uh some believe that that happens at those national parks, those people that disappear, you know, that's where yeah, it's the designated uh-huh. yeah. area. Um, so, I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I think that also I want to say that they seem to have some kind of alien technology. They seem to be able to do things that our technology cannot do. The, this government agency, like the, you know, being able to pop up in areas that, you know, I, like one day I went to Social Security, and um, and there was all these people all around. And then the guy, this guy, big guy, muscles, sits down right in front of me, and on the back of his shirt it said, "The elite," you know, you you know, the elite. Oh yeah, and, I know uh, who they are. <laughs> yeah, and that's what it said on his shirt, and um, he he just like sat around me. Then another big guy sat down next to me. Uh, both of these guys are big bodybuilder type, you know? And he just and they're both just sitting there. The whole time I'm sitting there it's, it's social security. And, you know, they never got a ticket, they never got got anything. They just sat down next to me and in front of me. So and and but the guy in front of me was the one with the T shirt that had the elite on the back of his shirt. 
So do you think that that was not a coincidence that perhaps they were there specifically for you? Well, I went to social security the next week is they, I had to bring a paper or something. The same two guys were there when I, after I sat down, same two guys sat in the same seats. Well, not in the same seats because it was, you know, in the same sort of seats because I didn't sit in the same seat. But that guy didn't have the elite shirt on anymore, but they were the same exact two guys. Now, out of all the, all the times, you know, thousands of people that go, you know, I'm going to see these same two guys come the exact same day that I went again and they exactly sit next to me again. I mean, just. So let, let's go through some of the. Uh... So you, you, uh, allegedly, it seems that somebody had gone to your house and, and well, well f- for reasons unknown to us, were speaking into your vents. Um, I don't right. know. I think they were trying to, but because after that happened, I uh, went out in my parking lot, but not not that day, but like a, a few days later, and there were three cars that all had the exact same license plate. And it said CAMS, hmm. C-A-M-S. And it didn't say a state. Like in the United States here, yeah, I, you guys are from Canada, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, in the United States, you know, every, every state issues its own license plate. But these weren't from any state. It said the United States of America. And that's what it said on there. CAMS, United States of America. And three, and it didn't say CAM 1, CAM 2, CAM 1, CAM 2, CAM 3. They all had the same license plate. That's So I think they were trying to put, put, put in my head that I'm being, I'm under surveillance. That's what I'm, that was my thing that I got out of it because, you know, um, I, but the thing is, how would they know when I was going to walk out of my house to put those cars there? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It seems like they can do things that don't, don't seem normal. And if you tell this to people, they're going to say you're crazy. But, you know, my daughter and mother have witnessed, you know, some, some of the stuff that I've shown, you know, so. Well, the, the interesting thing, actually, uh, most cases where somebody is believes that they're being chased by whether it's the men in black or the CIA, um, it's always like that. It's all, it's always, it always puts them in a position where, their story sounds crazy to anyone they tell it. And I don't think that's an accident. I, I think that's specifically so that uh, nobody believes their story is to dis- discredit them, right? Um, so what other, I mean, was there any more examples of, I mean, we, we got them going to your vents. We, we got them, you know, uh, oddly enough, these guys show up kind of suspiciously uh, two different ca- occasions when you go to the uh, this place. And then you got right. these cars with the uh, weird license plates. I mean, what else had happened? Like, what well, else? Uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of electronic stuff. Just I, I, phone calls. Uh, odd phone, like I try to make a phone call. Like when I was first trying to contact people about this, no matter who I contacted, I couldn't get anybody. At least, no matter who I emailed or what phone call I tried to make, never made a connection to anybody. This. This was this was back in like 2013 or maybe early 2014, something like that. Um, you know, I, I wanted to you know talk to people about this and see if you know people were you know what was going on, and it, I just I couldn't get in touch with anybody. I mean, then you I I call like uh, I remember there was a number for for Bill Burns that I found on the internet, and when I called, I just got you know all this just the craziest just sounds I never ever heard from from a phone. And then sometimes I would get phone calls and I still get phone calls, really strange phone calls where people were asking me, asking for somebody else. Also, well, I have this one story that <laughs> this, well, let me, you want, you want to hear the story? Yeah. It's, it's okay. Well, I, I can't actually, <laughs> Uh, I forgot all about this. Um, okay, well, I was at my mother's house with my daughter, and you know, this is during that time, and uh, things uh, were you know really bad, and 
it, it was becoming morning, and I swore that there was, I saw a person in her house. I swore I saw a man in her house. So I went and told my mother, went and told my daughter, there's somebody in this house. And they weren't believing me. They were saying, there's nobody here. There's nobody can be here. And I said, believe me, you know? And so uh, I ended up calling. Uh, my, I said, well, look, if there's not a man in the house, I am absolutely nuts. So I, just, I said, look, I'm going to call 911. So I called because you know, I was going to go. I put myself into a hospital. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, because uh, I thought, you know, they're not believing me that a man's in this house. And, you know, when, what else is it to do? I mean, I, I know what I saw. And they weren't believing me. So uh, I called out one. Man, when I called the operator, the operator that got on the phone, and then she said, okay, what's your address? And I gave her my address. And then... She said, okay, what's your address? And, I, and so I gave her my address again. And then she said, okay, what's your address? I, so I gave it to her again. And I said, oh, so you're going to ask me for my address again, aren't you? And she said, yeah. And she started laughing at me. This that, is the 911 operator. This yeah. is why I'm saying that, that the, the, they, these people seem to have technology. How could they have, I guess they could grab calls. I don't know. I, and I, I don't know how they got me to the point where I was going to knew they were gonna, I was going to call um, nine one one on myself. How could they have known that? So, uh, but anyway, it sounds uh, like your call, is, your call was intercepted. I mean, is that? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I believe. But the thing is, how did they know I was going to make that call? How did they know I was going to? Because wait till we hear the rest of the story. So anyway. Um, yeah, I call a, and, and the police do arrive with an ambulance and I tell them, look, I'm not feeling right. Something strange is going on. I'd like to go to a hospital and see what they say. So as, they, so of course they, you know, they had a stretcher there and a, and a lady came up to me and she said, Hey, remember me? You remember me? And I never saw this lady in my life. And, um, and I, so I just brushed that off too. And then they put me in an, uh, an ambulance that I, I had been in ambulance. I, I broke, I broke a lot of bones and stuff in the past. So I've been in other ambulances and always, you could always talk to the driver and stuff, but this ambulance was totally different where the back of the ambulance was completely in, enclosed by itself. You couldn't, there was no, uh, it, you couldn't interact with the driver at all. I mean, it was completely other kind of thing. It was like a truck kind of way. And when I was in the back of the ambulance, um, I was with this, uh, 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 EMT and he was, uh, he was, he was like really like not nasty with me, but like it's giving me dirty looks and everything. And, uh, you know, he was like, I was telling him, look, I'm not feeling right. I'm not, I'm not sure if everything's okay. Could you, could you please like try to reassure me? didn't answer me, didn't say anything. And then all of a sudden he gets on his cell phone and, then, and I hear him talking and then he goes, yeah, we're going to, um, yeah, we got this guy back here. We're going to bring him to the dumping station. The dumping station. <laughs> yeah. Now you think, talk about somebody that's starting to freak out and think, all right, I'm, they're going to kill me. They're going to take it where they took that guy in Jacob's ladder. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, they didn't take me to a dumping station. They took me to a hospital. The hospital I had been before, but it was a different section of the hospital. They didn't take me to the hospital where I had been before. They took me to a different section where I and this other guy were the only patients and the only people other than two nurses in this whole big section of the hospital, just two nurses. And there was another guy across from me who was naked on a, on a gurney, just screaming his head off, just, just like, wailing and screaming and carrying on and so like I, I finally i said to the nurse uh i said you know what's wrong with that guy she goes oh that's what happens when you don't take your meds anyway uh so like by this time i had you know i become a little bit dehydrated I said, can i get a glass of water she comes in with a with a cup of water but right behind the cup of water 
with an eyedropper with its top taken off. That's uh, that's <laughs> yeah. <foreboding. laughs> So I'm like, all right, they just put something in here, and I, you know, you see, everything is done to freak me out, you know, and so of course, you know, after she left, I didn't drink it. I dumped that out and went to the faucet and poured some fresh water, and um, and then this guy across the hall from me, he just keeps on screaming and screaming and screaming. Then all of a sudden, this this orderly who looks like they described the men in black. This guy looked like he had never seen a day of sun in his life. This guy, he didn't, he didn't look like he had, he had like uh, hepatitis or anything, but his skin just looked like it never, it never saw the sun. And he was like muscly, but you know, tight and wiry. And he, um, and he and two other orderlies uh, went up to the screaming guy and they said, oh yeah? Uh, this is what we do to pedophiles. And they start beating the crap out of them. And I'm like, oh my God, where am I? So I said, I I'm out of here. So I ran, you know, the exits that say, do not go through here unless it's an emergency. Well, <laughs> I ran out those doors. I ran out those doors as fast as I could. And, and But no alarm went off. I thought I hear this big alarm and I, and I, I thought for sure they're going to come chasing me. I thought there was going to be cops all over. I I really did. I didn't I, I didn't know what was going on, you know. And so I start running away from this place, and uh, then I, I thought they were going to come try to, you know. So I see this big two by four that's laying on the ground. So I pick it up. So I'm I I see that nobody's running after me. So I just start walking. Well, no, no, actually, I was still running a little bit. And then I got to the highway, and I'm in and out of cars with this big two by four and people are whizzing by, but nobody's like looking at me. Nobody's honking their horns. Nobody's calling the police on me. Nothing. It's like everything is normal out there except, but yeah, if I would have saw myself on that highway, I would have called the police and said, like, there's a madman running around on the highway with a big two by four, <laughs> but, but nobody did. Nobody called on me. And I, um, I started walking home and, uh, where, but I didn't, I didn't know, like, I, I, I've never driven to this hospital, so I didn't know my way home. So, but miraculously for had some, it was, it was probably like eight miles to my house and miraculously I walked directly home without any kind of anybody telling me how to get there or, oh yeah. And on the way I called 911 to tell to tell uh, the police that there's something wrong with this hospital and if, if they could come and, and talk to me, I'd really appreciate it. They never came. I also, and then I called my mother and I said, look, I'm on this road, come pick me up. And she tried calling me back and nothing. She never couldn't get back in touch with me. And after all that, I, I walked home and I got home in about like, I don't know, like four hours on my, it took a long time. And then I got home. I got to say the <laughs> the hospital part is very eerie to me. I mean, first of all, I mean, even in a small place, you you just don't find large areas that are uh, em unoccupied. Em yeah, yeah, em empty like that. But you know, a couple of things that uh, they got to me. Okay, you got the naked screaming guy. And you just you don't see that, right? I mean, they're they're covered up. But right. even, but even like okay. I do believe pedophiles should be beat, but I can't. I yeah. can't see uh, the orderlies doing it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yes. Who? I mean, and why weren't they beating him before? But why isn't this guy in prison? Why isn't this guy in jail? Why isn't? Why is this guy naked? It almost. It almost seemed like uh, a show for you in in a way. Exactly. Um, yeah, but the thing is, how? You just think of the logistics of having to pull all this off. And how did they know that I was going to go crazy at that time? Well, it just, unless they had some kind of like device, like microwaves in my brain, making me go crazy at the time. And, you know, so, and, and you know, my mother and daughter, you know, of course, I mean, this isn't something that I dreamed up because they know that I went to the hospital. They saw me getting the ambulance and everything. So they know all about this. And she says, you know, we tried calling you back. You, you know, you never picked up. So uh, aside from these, um, you know, this particular trip to the hospital and um, 
some of the things that you're describing sound like a phenomenon known as uh, gang stalking. Um, yes. Were there any other, you know, paranormal events that uh, transpired after um, receiving, I, you know, finding the videos and 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 having this uh, this gang stalking yeah. episode? Uh huh. Um, I, I could. I mean, millions of them. As far as uh, paranormal, let me see. Well, the latest one, which I have a video of, which happened in just July of this year, which was uh, real, the whole week was just totally freaky. I uh, was at my condo, but, and um, oh yeah, when they were around, when I know the aliens are around, all of my light bulbs no longer give off a white light. They go off, give off like an orangish reddish glow, which I also have on it, uh, videos. You could, yeah, you could see that these lights are no longer giving off a white glow; they're giving off an orangish and reddish glow. Yeah, I have more videos too, but I just haven't put them out because they're not. Edit. I'm not a computer expert at, or video expert at all. I think maybe you could tell by the way your videos are on here, but um, so you know. Anyway, the the lights give off a, a red orange glow, and I, that's one of the reasons I know that they're around. Um, I mean, that, that makes no sense. I mean, it's like I entered another dimension or or something because you know these lights always give off white light. Anyway, that day back in July, I saw that the lights, you know, were giving off this odd glow and everything, and um, I had. They had told me, all of a sudden in my head, not a voice, but it was just like, hey, you know, you should go outside right now. And uh, I said, you really should go outside. Not a voice telling me that I was like myself saying, you know, you, I think I, I want to go outside. I want to go outside. I, I need to see something. So I went to my back porch. And, my, and um, I live in a condo. There's, I live in the middle of Fort Myers, which is a city. In, for, in Florida, and uh, I don't know what the population is, 100,000, or something like that, I don't know. Um, but, um, I, so I'm, on the, I'm in the first floor of a condo. There's three, there's three floors in my condo. People live year-round, and I go out to my back porch, and I notice that my condo light is the only light on. Every light I, as far as far as I can see is out and not one car moving and the air was hardly moving it was like they had shut off the power and shut off time for everybody else other than me I mean it's just like everything was a super still no lights for as far as I could see and I was about to whip out at that time I was like hey this is strange I was about to take a video and I was like well what is this I'm going to show people that there's no lights anywhere. <laughs> you know, what would that prove to anybody, you know, that you, you know, that people just didn't have lights on, but there's no cars, nothing. And, uh, totally freaked me out. And during that week, also, uh, I was in my bedroom in my condo and, um, I felt that I, the lights were, you know, changed again. And I felt like there was something out in the living room. And I was scared. I was like a little girl. I didn't want to go out there. I, I was afraid. I, you know, uh, people who say that they can have aliens running around and not be scared, I don't see how that can happen. I mean, I, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. You know, I can say I'm not, I'm not a, 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 a weak guy by, by any means. And But, you know, having aliens or whatever around you, you know, it's very scary. So anyway, there, there's a big gap underneath my door in my bedroom, about one or two inches. And I, I said, well, you know, I'll take my camera and I'll pan it underneath the door to see if I could see somebody walking out in my living room. So I did do that. And then, you know, I stopped filming. But I didn't watch the video at that time. And I watched the video hours later. And that's, I saw that there was an eyeball looking back at me underneath the door. That's creepy. Yeah, yeah actually, and that's I, I, I did that's, watch that video. That was strange. Yes. I mean, it's green. There's a, it's like a green bean with a friggin' eyeball 
and he's looking right back at me. And I don't know why I didn't watch the video at that time, but I'm glad I didn't watch the video at that time because I think I probably would have run out of there screaming, you know? So, um, Ward, have you... Like, one thing that's common with uh, many people who witness either aliens or UFOs and, and the wrong people find out about it is that they often get threatened. Sometimes it's a veiled no, threat. No threatens. Nope. Okay. Not one. Not one threat. And that's another thing. You know, if if this is about trying to keep me quiet, I swear, you know, I, I, I'm a good person. And if the government really did come to me and said, look, there are reasons that we're keeping this quiet because really it does. I mean, it... It, it, you know, uh, if and give me a good reason, I would never say a word. I really wouldn't. But nobody's ever come to me. Nobody's ever threatened me. So all Nothing bets are like off. We're telling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, it's the truth. I mean, I, I, you know, I try to be a good person. I try to do the right things. You know, and if if you know if somebody comes and tells me there's a reason behind why they're doing it, fine. But, you know, all these strange, there's no rhyme or reason behind any of it. It doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, but like I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there were, threat, there were a lot of threats that people were going to kill me and stuff, but that was, like, in my house, and it wasn't about the videos and stuff. You know, like, this goes back to the gang stalking and stuff. Um, you know, people were saying that they're going to come to my house and kill me and all. And that was a terrible fire and all this other stuff. Yeah, you're right. You know, I, see, I forget about all this stuff until people ask me these questions. That's right. So I the, forgot. You know, I try not to remember those things, though. So when you were hearing through the vent, uh, that's the kind of thing. That, that that would be where the threats came from. Exactly. And w was it on more than one occasion? Oh, yeah. Many, 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 many times. So when did it and, stop? Um, actually, just about the time that, uh, I started, uh, going public. Okay. I would have stuck a so, camera out there and just tried to see. Oh, I tried. I tried. I, I tried recording. I did get them. One time I got a, a good recording of, um, they were making fun of Jesus and like, this was, this was, it was like they had a, 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 like a comedy album, but it was all like, uh, like Satanist. It was like they were making these jokes about like saints and Jesus and Mary. And, and then you hear some people laughing in like an audience. Like you hear like a comedian, oh yeah, Jesus. Blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden you hear this laugh track and then another one and then another one. And I had the song, um, recorded do you have that and, online yeah i do and but i i don't this is also around the time that i see i didn't know anything about cell phones or computers or anything so you know that when i was running uh from in the hospital yeah i was thinking maybe they could track me through my sd card so i took an sd card and chucked it and so I, maybe we could go. I could I could go back to some day with a metal detector and find that sucker, you know. But because uh, I didn't know anything about cell phones, how they worked, right? I, you know, I'm really I, I'm not a big electronics guy, so I really thought maybe they could track. That's how they could track you with your SD card, which I now I know it's totally idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Ward, uh, are, do you still have regular? Uh, regular run-ins or, or like are, are things still happening today actually things really have calmed down in both the alien and the gang stalking stuff all that stuff has seemed to calm down once i went public That's so i don't know if it if it's it, this that could just be a coincidence i don't know you know i really don't know uh it just but you know i'm gonna tell you something anytime i had interactions with i felt the aliens like when they seem to be around, they never seem threatening to me. They never seem like they were out to hurt me. And believe me, with their technology, they could have hurt me anytime they wanted to. And like, you know, it seemed like they were trying to, I, this is my thoughts that the aliens were trying to show me that I'm not a crazy person. That's why they had me film some of this stuff. 
but maybe uh, the government had said some way of going in and, and pulling those those videos out. I don't know. Because it sure seems like, why would you let somebody record something and take it back? Or maybe they just wanted me to see this stuff. But the thing is, they let me, they, they did let me keep some videos, like that eyeball video. They never tried to take back. I've had some other really good videos that they, people have been taken back, but, uh, you know, it doesn't, the whole thing just doesn't make any logic. I mean, this would drive Spock crazy. Nothing, nothing here is logical. Everything is totally illogical. They give me videos, they take videos back. They give me videos, they let me keep some videos. Uh, you know, I hear you know, these nasty voices, but then I hear you know, these aliens seem nice to me, you know? <laughs> Maybe it's an experiment. Like, there, there, there's a group somewhere that's just like, let's just mess with this guy. <laughs> we'll just, <Well. laughs> you know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> we'll let, yeah, you know, right? We'll, we'll whisper well, into an event, and, you know, we'll take him to this weird hospital. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll put some stuff on a cell phone, and they're, they're just sitting back having a, a, a big <laughs> laugh at it right now. <laughs> Could be, man. I tell you, that's just as good as reason. It, I, you know, answers anything else that I could think of. I tell you, one thing that I they did do is that in one of my videos, uh, a low, deep, metallic voice said to me, "Red light, you are the first one." That's bizarre. now that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't. The only thing I have a I have a red laser on my keychain that I play around with. I was thinking maybe that's why they call me red light. But still, the first one of what? You know? Maybe you're the first <laughs> one they're going to pick on and, <laughs> and do all these, <laughs> these strange things. So, uh, I mean, as far as stories goes, yours is pretty out there. Um, yeah. It, it, I'm, tr I'm sitting here trying to think of a motive or, or like you said, it, it, trying to make sense of it and... It's really hard to make sense of, but it does sound at the same time uh, is interesting, right? The the hospital part right. really, you know what it reminds me of? I don't know if you've ever seen this movie, but there's this movie called The Game, and it's got Michael Douglas. Oh, yeah, in, yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw that movie. Yep, right. yeah, you're and, right. And there was just all these strange coincidences, and it was just this big elaborate puzzle. In the end, he ended up finding out... Uh, the, the, Basically, yeah, somebody's brother. Yeah, he he learned what it was like not to, you know, that, that money wasn't everything. That that right, you know, right. what was really important in life, and that was the gift, you know, the the only gift that he could give him that he didn't have. And and I can't help but wonder that if there was something like that in your story, if yeah, that thing, if that be. thing that you're gonna find out in seven years, right? Maybe uh -huh. maybe, uh -huh. <laughs> maybe it's gonna be like, uh. You know, no, I know what it is. I know what it is. That's what it, it, they, they they told me. I mean, it said so on the, on the letter. How much faith but do you it, have in it? How much faith do I have in it? Absolutely. I don't. In, well, so far, <laughs> they haven't shown me anything to be. I I, have, <laughs> I don't have an answer for that, man. Honestly, I I really don't. I mean, I I can't. I wouldn't say. I, they, I can't believe anything they've shown me or, or done. I I just can't. It just I am just so confused about all of this. You know, that's one of the reasons I decided to go public too. Is that you know I was hoping that I could find other people with similar stories. Well, but so mine seems to see Whitley Strieber. You know, had a lot of strange. But you know, so many people. I, I wish people would take Lottie. Like, I, 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 I'm willing, my, myself, my daughter, my mother, we're all willing to take lie detector tests to prove that my stories and videos are 100% true. And I, and I wish more, you know, that there was one available that was cheap at L, and I wish that a lot of these people that are putting these stories out there would do something like that so I could maybe start to believe because I, I know some of these people are out not lying to make money. Well, some, um, you know, sometimes people from our show do actually meet uh, you know, people similar stories through their story, either in the comment sections. I, I've even had people email me and say, you know, I've had a, a story similar to this person's story. Can you put me in touch and so on? Uh, one person who I feel if it felt similar in the stuff that he had experienced to a degree was a guy that we interviewed called, uh, or his name was Dante Kelly Das. And, um, he might be someone to talk to. I mean, if you can, 
if you can find him somewhere, I don't know if he if he's got his own YouTube channel, but we got a we got a video with him. And okay, so can you uh, send me a link to that so I because uh, make sure I know which one I'll get, I'll get the right one. Yeah, I I could probably find that for you. Um, he okay. might be someone to talk to because or just his name, or just his name actually, or just his name that would be just as good. Okay. Um. Uh, well, when uh, when we clue up. When I get this online, I'll see if I can, right. you know, I, I say I'm going to try, but my memory is like that of a goldfish sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, okay. he would he would be one to talk to because, uh, well, Ryan, you could probably chime in here. Dante Kalidas, his story is a lot like uh, Ward's, wouldn't you say? Uh, certainly. Um, now his, of course, focus more so on the gang stalking and uh, some of the uh, electronic harassment. Yeah. But but it, but it was still harassment. It was still a lot of like really hard to categorize. Um, really, right. it was well, really I have had to... people leave comments uh, about that they are finding stuff on their phones. Uh, I've had a couple, like two or three people now contact me. They found stuff on their phones, but I uh, say some of them. They, they, I've seen it, you know, but it's it's nothing like mine, and they are only pictures now. It, so um, maybe it's gonna. Um, progress the video or maybe not or maybe i don't know well know? in dante's case uh you know they they had used people and technology in a way to really uh, in a way that he felt manipulated his life in, in, to a mm -hmm. degree right yeah that's, uh, yeah that's the gang stalking phenomenon right so uh, that's the the closest you know uh the, the person that comes right. around most um, and like I said, you know, sometimes we do interviews with a couple different people and, you know, their their stories are similar enough that they go on beyond the show and, and start to converse and try to piece everything together. Um, yeah. so, so that might be something. And also, you know, keep your eye on the, the comments because every now and then we do have people chime in, um, you know, who've, who has some experiences or insight into uh, what you're speaking of. And right. uh, and with that said, uh, Ward, is there anything else you'd like to add before we clue up? Oh, just that you know, um, my feeling is is that like the paranormal, UFOs. I mean, it's all intertwined somehow. I don't know how, but it just it just seems like the evidence that I have collected and everything that I uh, have seen. It just seems like it's all just one big crazy thing, and that. Um, you know, if anybody's interested in, you know, like a Ward Alien video, or if you want to reach me, you can reach me at Ward Alien Video, one word at gmail.com. Perfect. So, uh, Ward, thanks for coming on to the show and, uh, hey. you know, telling us your story. And, uh, Thank it, you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. And for everybody else, I, uh, right from the get go, actually, I hope when I mention it, just just go on over to Ward's uh, uh, channel and watch the video so, you, you know, you have. Um, you know, you have it in perspective when he's talking on on what happened to him. And, uh, again, if you have your own effed up story, we'd love to get it from you. You can submit that to us at effedupstories.com. That's E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. I'll get it on the website and eventually into a podcast. And, again, if you have uh, any information on the reptilians, whether it's personal or just stuff that uh, you know of that's not widely known, I would like to get that from you. Um, yeah. So with that said, everybody, thanks for listening, and I hope you'll tune in next time. Have a great night, everyone.